Hi everybody, Bentley Compost Guy Christy here again. In this video, I am going to show you how to split a worm bin. But let's get started with a little bit of backstory. Back in the middle of March, I set up a brand new plastic tub worm bin using a bag of my Easy Worm Mix. And for those who are unfamiliar with that, that is a Red Wiggler starter mix that I happen to sell up here in Canada. Easy Worm Mix is what I refer to as a nursery mix. It contains a large amount of quality living material. It's basically really nice habitat material plus all sorts of beneficial microbes. And of course, loads and loads of young worms and cocoons, uh, along with a fair number of mature worms as well. And it offers a very effective way to get a brand new vermicomposting system going. In the case of my test bin, it's actually even exceeded my already high expectations. Now, as shown in some of the other recent videos that I've created, it's almost as though this huge red room population has kind of appeared out of nowhere. Now, obviously, it's actually just all those teeny tiny hatchling worms that have grown up and are now becoming visible. But uh, either way, it's pretty exciting. And they've been blasting through all the optimized food waste that I've been adding to the bin. And just generally, the bin has been really, really thriving. So based on the densities of worms that I've been seeing and the abundance of finished vermicompost in there, I thought it might be fun to quote unquote split the bin, creating two active worm bins. I've never created a video showing how to split a bin, so I knew this would be a great opportunity to put together a little tutorial for you. All right, so what exactly does splitting a worm bin mean? Well, as you might guess, this is the process of removing half the worm-rich material from one system and adding it to a new bin. Each of the two bins also receives new food and bedding in the process. Now, why and when would we want to do this? Well, normally splitting offers you a way to expand your worm herd while also creating healthier systems, so that's why you'd want to do it. But generally speaking, this is something that you're going to wait, you know, two to three months before considering uh, just because you do want the bin to you know, accumulate a fair amount of the vermicompost and have a larger population of worms in it. As the proportion of worm castings increases in a worm, worm bin, the habitat quality declines. And if you leave things too long, you can end up with what I refer to as mature worm bin syndrome. And this is any number of different things that can go wrong here. But usually what, what happens is that you start seeing worms trying to escape, you know, for apparently no reason, or actually even starting to die off. And you, you generally obviously don't want to get to that point. And when you provide composting worms with fresh habitat and food, and even more room to spread out in, it's really gonna help stimulate population growth. So splitting is a really, really great way to speed up the expansion of your herd. And that being said, you know, it's important to note that obviously not everybody wants to expand and have a million different bins in their house. And if, you, if that's you, if you don't wanna expand your herd, rather than splitting your bin, after this two to three or you know, plus month time period, what you're going to want to do is harvest the vermicompost from the system and basically just start a new single system with the worms and remaining material and of course that fresh bedding and food as well. All right, now it's time to look at how I split my bin today. So here's a picture of how the system looked this morning. Pretty typical plastic enclosed worm bin. You know, lots of bedding in there, a fairly thick layer of bedding on top. But down below, there were loads and loads of worms and loads and loads of dark, rich living material, as mentioned. The first thing I wanted to do was to prep the new system for receiving the worm-rich material. 
what I did first was filled, you know, approximately the lower one third of the of the bin with moistened shredded cardboard and brown paper. It doesn't really matter. Could be half one third. It doesn't really matter as long as you're you're adding a fairly thick layer of the bedding down below. Next, I prepped some frozen and thawed food waste in a separate tub. Now remember. The more you optimize your, your food materials, the faster the worms are going to be able to start and finish processing them. And the less likely you're going to end up with an explosion of unwanted organisms like fruit flies. So freezing and then thawing, basically this is just throwing them in a bag, throwing them in the freezer, and then bringing them out whatever number of days later and thawing them out. This helps to start the breakdown process, as I've talked about in other videos. You know, breaks the cells in some of these food, these fruit and vegetable wastes, and so that's sort of a, a they start to the physical breakdown. But then, when you chop everything up even more, then you're exposing all this surface area for the microbes. It's going to make things, you know, a lot easier for the microbes and the worms. So before I added any of the food waste to the brand new system, I made sure to cut it up uh, even more. Now, if you're wondering about the tea bags, I wasn't too concerned about them since they are almost, you know, almost like a habitat material or at least a sort of long-term food source. And they're not likely going to attract any uh, major pests or anything like that. I then added about half of the optimized food waste to the new system, just directly on top of that moistened bedding layer. Remember that the other half is, of course, going to be going into the original system. Next, I started transferring material from the top half of the original system over to the new system. Hopefully that's not too confusing. Now, this was mostly cover bedding. Uh, with some worms, you know, worms that are up near the top and a little bit of living material, but mostly it's just sort of a, an older bedding material. Then, you know, it was a very, very simple process of just excavating half of the worm-rich material from the original bin with, you know, just I had a glove and a hand rake just to kind of scrape it up and then just transferring this over to the new system. Now here is what the original system looked like at that point, as you probably guess, it's just a worm bin with half of the contents missing. Now it's not a bad idea to very gently mix in this worm rich material in the new system. This is going to help to distribute that living material, mix it in with the food waste. And I've talked about that in other videos. Again, you're getting all that surface area covered with these beneficial decomposing microorganisms. So that's really going to help. And then, of course, it distributes the worms a bit as well. But no need to go too crazy with this since the activity of the worms is going to serve to mix things up just fine. And they are obviously going to move around quite a bit on their own. All right, so now it's time to freshen up the original system. And very, very simple process, you know, somewhat different, but, you know, similar idea. First, I started by filling the empty half of the bin with moistened bedding plus that remaining optimized food waste. Obviously, it's not exactly the same setup. All the new stuff wasn't down on the bottom the way it was in the new system, but this is not a big deal at all. Because I once again ended up gently mixing everything together. And, you know, by the time I was finished, the final result was pretty similar. Lastly, I added a fairly thick layer of dry bedding at the top of both systems, the way I normally do. And then just put on the lids on both bins. At this point, I'm going to let the worms settle in probably for another three to five days before I start to feed again. But I think by that point, uh, both systems will be re ready to receive uh, a bit more food material. Now, I'm really excited to see how well both of these systems ends up doing and how much black gold I can get from both of these bins uh, by the time late spring arrives. And I'll certainly keep everyone posted, so stay tuned for more updates. And that's pretty much it. Once again, this is Bentley Compost Guy Christy, and I'll be talking to you again soon.